Hi guys, I'm just going to give the attendees some uh, time to enter the room. See some regular names here, fantastic. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to kick this off now. And uh, um, yeah, that's it. So look, welcome. A very good morning or, or afternoon or evening from wherever you're joining us from. Uh, from myself and the uh, FP Markets team, thanks so much for, for joining us uh, for this presentation on the MACD. For Look, for newer traders especially, this I can assure you that by the end of this this uh, webinar, you will be more confident with the uh, MACD indicator and, you know, have sufficient knowledge to begin applying it to the charts with, you know, confidence. So, look, as I say, we, <clears throat> we have a reasonably good turnout uh, with, as I've said, some regulars here, which is always great. Look, by way of a quick introduction for anyone that's new to these uh, presentations, uh, my name's Aaron Hill and i um, I'm the technical analyst for FP Markets. I've been involved in the financial markets for more than uh, for more than 12 years now, and um, I also completed the CMT program. And um, on the back of that, I also received the CFTE qualification. Look, just to be clear, guys, you do not need these qualifications or the, uh, these des uh, these charters to be able to trade successfully. <clears throat> I know a number of traders that work uh, as as uh, independent traders and uh, they they've never taken a course in their life it's all self-taught uh, finally for me personally how i how i how i view the charts is is through basic price action when i say basic i'm talking about i'm talking about support and resistance and uh, i also I also really like fibonacci uh, the rsi is reg is a regular with me and um I'm a, I'm a big fan of what i like to call chart psychology so chart psychology i i look for where the stops are i look for where i believe the stops are but i i believe the weak hands are and i try to take advantage of that uh with additional technical tools so above or below the the level um, I take it. Look, I take it. All uh, you can you can see the welcome slide not, uh, 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 clearly, and you can hear me loud and clear. Look, any issues, guys? Do let me know in the chat box, and uh, I'll try and get the support team to help you out. Now, as for a recording, this will be available through the usual avenues, either through the FP Markets main website, which you can find under, uh, quite simply, look on the uh, main website and look for webinars, and you'll find the archived uh, webinars at that point there. Or alternatively, guys, just, just click through the um, um, uh, uh, links in the chat box. And as you can see, we also have the our YouTube channel. This will be uploaded within the hour of uh, uh, concluding this uh, presentation. Look, as usual, guys, I need to run through the disclaimer. So just really briefly, the information contained in this material is intended for general advice only. It does not take into account your investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs. Uh, FP Markets has made every effort to ensure the accuracy of the information as at the date of publication. Now, I'm not going to read through all of this. Suffice to say that... Um, that this is a presentation uh, that should be taken as an educational uh, uh, webinar and uh, not as direct investment advice. Okay, so look, in terms of topics, we're going to we're going to fir first, of course, introduce the uh, MACD, uh, basically show the structure of the indicator and uh, label what the uh, components are. Then we'll look at the MACD formula. Look, the MACD formula is is far easier to calculate and far easier to understand than most of the momentum based indicators. Um, so that should be pretty straightforward. And then we'll go over some uh, MACD strategies um, and, and also look at the MACD convergence with other tools. Now, this is the important part for me, as I never use the MACD as a standalone uh, indicator. So I never take um, I never take the um, MACD in isolation to make a to generate a trading decision. Okay, the moving average convergence divergence. Look, I understand this is a, a bit of a mouthful, but um, look, it's commonly pronounced as either MACD or MACD. <clears throat> so the MACD is one of the more 
you know, it's one of the more popular indicators and it was developed by Gerald Appel in the late um, 70s. I think it was actually 1979 he, he released the indicator. Um, so with that being said, here is a, an image of the MACD. Now, this is a chart from TradingView, just to be clear. Uh, so the MACD really, for me, it's the best of, um, best of both worlds in that it, it's a trend following indicator and also serves well as a momentum oscillator. So the MACD essentially shows the, it, what it does is it shows the relationship between, between two moving averages of the underlying price. So that could be of a currency pair, that could be of a cryptocurrency, that could be of a commodity um, or an indice. And, 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 and it's really, you know, the MACD is really what I would consider mostly a lagging indicator, as we are, of course, working with moving averages and moving averages by, uh, by, this, uh, by itself are lagging. So just to be clear for any of our newer traders here, a lagging indicator is a tool that provides, you know, the best way to describe a lagging indicator is it's um, delayed feedback, which means it provides a signal a signal following an event. So following price movement. So it follows price. Um, and these are used by commonly by trend traders, you know, so that they use, they use the moving averages to confirm the trend is in play. Look, for me, I, I agree with many other technical analysts that uh, the components of the MACD is not solely a lagging indicator that, that there are, um, there are, it is, it is also for me, a leading indicator as well. So it's a combination of the two. Now, just to be clear, there are three components to this, to the MACD. There are two moving averages, which I'll explain very shortly. And there is also the histogram, which again, I will explain. So the two moving averages, as I've said, are invariably, you know, they are lagging indicators as they only provide signals. I just really want to get this across as they only provide signals once the two lines have crossed each other. It's very similar to the um, moving average crossover you see on many of the charts. So think of the most common, the 200 day, uh, the 200 day simple moving average and the 50 day simple moving average. If the 50 day simple moving average crosses above the 200 day, Simple moving average, we have what's known as a, um, a golden cross, I believe it's called. And uh, if uh, conversely, 50 day crossing below the 200 day SMA uh, is, is what's known as a death cross. So, and, and what these do is they signal that the trend is already in motion. So it's, uh, it, it's a confirmation tool, if you will. But the MACD histogram, Look, the MACD histogram are these bars here. Again, I will show this in more detail later, but the MACD histogram is, is sometimes considered a leading indicator as it is used to anticipate the moving average cross <coughs> crossovers at this point here. Okay, so, um, and, and, and really what the bars represent here are the, is the difference between the MACD line and the signal line. So as you can see, there's a spread between these two. Again, look, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here a little bit, but I, I will confirm or uh, 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 readdress all of the, all of these, uh, uh, this basic introduction as we progress. Um, so look, just to, just to be clear, leading indicators, uh, react to prices quickly, right? So that, that they react to prices prior to price uh, price movement, um, um, uh, a price move. Um, and lagging indicate lagging indicators for many are, are said to be more accurate uh, 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 because they are far slower to react, right? So um, you you will often find that leading indicators can produce um, uh, uh, false signals. But look, uh, that's not to say that uh, lagging indicators do not also pr produce false signals. So look, just to, just to um, really um, end the introduction, what's great about the, and I'm going to be repeating myself here, but what's great about the MACD is it effectively transforms two trend following um, uh, indicators, two EMAs to be precise, exponential moving averages. 
And what it does is it transforms that into a, um, a, a momentum oscillator, uh, which is your MACD line. Uh, this is the blue line on the chart here and, um, and is formed by subtracting the 26-day EMA by the 12-day uh, EMA. Again, I will go over that shortly. Um, we then work with what's known as a signal line. So this is your orange line, and this is essentially a nine-day EMA of the MACD line, okay? So um, it's a derivative of the MACD line. And that's, uh, yeah, so quite simply, it's a nine-day EMA of the MACD line. Right, so the as you can see here, look, the MACD, think of the blue line here, guys, it fluctuates above and below a zero line. This is quite important to understand. The MACD line fluctuates above and below the uh, 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 zero line. Um, again, I'll explain this shortly, but what it shows is the, the moving averages, how they converge, diverge, and cross. Hence the term moving average convergence divergence. Now, the MACD, as I've said, also serves very well in trending markets as unlike so think of the um, RSI, the Relative Strength Index. The RSI is bounded between 0 and 100. But the, as you can see on the chart here, the MACD has no boundaries. So just to give you a taste of what's to come, on the MACD, we look for what's known as signal line crossovers, center line crossovers, divergences. And, um, and look, I also look for overbought and oversold signals. But as the indicator is not bounded, like the RSI is, um, many find that the overbought and oversold signals do not are, are not as <clears throat> are not as accurate. Uh, however, there is still a way we can we can we can work with this, um, as I will show in the presentation. Of course, just to, just to round this off, we also have the histogram. I just want to be clear now. According to what I've read, the histogram was not developed developed by the uh, by uh, Gerald Appel. It was actually invented by a gentleman who goes by the name of uh, Thomas Asprey. And I think he developed that in 1980, uh, 1986. So this was an addition to the uh, MACD. So for any of us, uh, look, I, I would it would encourage you to understand the calculation as it is, as it really is it really um, enhances your understanding of the um, of the uh, of the um, of the indicator itself. So just so we're all on the same page, let's take a quick look at the calculation. Now, for me, as I've said already, this is one of the more simpler indicators to compute. It's certainly a lot more a lot more straightforward than the RSI, which I believe I touched on last week or the week prior. So first of all, of course, we have price change, right? We, we just, be clear, just to be clear, the MACD is a derivative of price change. It's, it, it, you know, it, 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 the MACD is calculated from price change. Let's, let's be, cl be clear on that. So the MACD line is the uh, blue line on the previous chart. And all this is, as you can see here, it's very, very basic, 26-day exponential moving average minus the 12 day exponential moving average. And this calculation here forms the MACD line. The signal line guys, really, as I've already said, the nine day EMA of the MACD line. So the signal line is in fact a derivative of the MACD line, hence why the signal line is slower to react. So and the MACD histogram again, just to just to confirm, uh, just to just to reaffirm what I said, uh, the MACD histogram was developed by Gerald, uh, sorry, Thomas Asprey in 1986, and um, this was an, in addition to the MACD indicator that was developed by Gerald Appel. So the MACD histogram, very simple, guys. It's the MACD line, this this value here, uh, minus the signal line, and that provides the MACD histogram. So if you think about it, to get to the, uh, the histogram, it takes four calculations, okay? Four calculations to get to the histogram. And so look, um, the, the, so the 12-day EMA and the 26-day EMA are derived from price. These are the, your first two calculations to begin things. 
And um, these two EMAs, as you can see here, are then, the, uh, this is the third calculation uh, the, to calculate the MACD line. Finally, the fourth calculation is the signal line, which is the EMA, a nine day EMA of the MACD line. Um, uh, so oh, we have a question, just bear with me. Yes, Andrew, that's a good question. MT4 doesn't have the MACD line. It's very true. Um, I think you can, you can, um, you can, uh, uh, there are, there are EAs available. I think they're called EAs. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, there are indicators available, which you can download to MT4, which has that. I, I, I do remember that. Um, that's why I use the trading views. Uh, uh, MACD is just a lot easier for me. Um, but yes, uh, you, what you can do is you can download uh, uh, from MQL4, I believe. And it's free as well. There are free indicators available that has that. Um, I think what I think it does have the MACD line, Andrew. Just to be clear, it doesn't have the signal line. So what it has is the MACD line. It's just void of a signal line. It has the histogram, though, uh, just to be clear. So just, just a little bit more about the, hist the histogram. Uh, the histogram measures the distance between the MACD, uh, the MACD and its signal line. So it's, it, it's almost the spread, if you will, between the MACD line and the signal line. Um, and uh, look, the MACD histogram will fluctuate above and below the zero line. And look, the reason behind Thomas Asprey developing the MACD histogram was quite simply so he could anticipate the crossovers in the MACD. I hope this calculation is pretty, it's, it's, it's a pretty straightforward calculation, but any questions do ask me and we'll try and clear that, uh, we'll try and clear that up. Okay, look, so really for me, instead of going over slide after slide here, I, I think it's just a good idea for us to spin things over to the charts on TradingView. I have a chart prepared and uh, where, where we're, we're able to view things uh, in, in real time. So if you just bear with me, guys, I'm going to spin things over to the charts. Um, it would be really good if you can see this. Um, if you could just let me know if, if, you're, if you're currently seeing the euro dollar chart on the screen, that would be fantastic. Um, if you can just type Y or N in the, the, the chat box, if not, I'll reshare the screen just to be sure. Yeah, you can. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Right. So on the, on the screen, we have the euro dollar daily time frame. And as you can see, in response to Andrew's um, question regarding the, um, the MACD on MT4, he's quite right. I believe that it is void of the signal line, signal line. So it's void of the, so what you'll see is, um, is you'll see no signal line. So what you'll see is this. It's rather annoying. I get it. I, I do understand. Let me just see. Um, so I see a few questions coming through. What I'll do is I'll, I'll answer them at the end, if that's okay. I see one from Mark and uh, a few anonymous attendees. And uh, yeah, I take it that's, um, yeah, okay. So I'll answer them uh, following the presentation. If that's, if that's, if that's okay, guys. So look, let me just uh, uh, reapply the uh, signal line. All right, so again, guys, this is a Euro dollar daily time frame, And on the chart, I have the MACD histogram. Look, I have used the default periods. Now the default periods are the 12-day um, EMA, the 26-day EMA, and the nine-day EMA uh, for the signal line. Um, these are the default periods, I believe, that were developed by, um, by Gerald Appell. So to kick things off, I'm going to start with the centerline crossover. Now, the centerline crossover, if you remember, is the zero mark. Okay, um, and this is this is what many traders you'll see. That many traders do 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 simply say these are these are. Um, uh, uh, let me just. Uh, I need to be able to control my chart. One second. Yeah, these are the. Um, uh, uh, just simply referred to as centerline crossovers. So for me, this is really the most basic signal. Uh, you can't really get any more basic than this. If you're a fan of the RSI, it's simply the same. You're crossing over the 50 center line if you're looking at the RSI. Here, we're looking at a zero line instead. And, and um, look, just to be clear again, I, I always term these as bullish and bearish centerline crossovers. Uh, when the MACD crosses a centerline. So for instance, 
Here we can see that the blue line, remember the blue line is the MACD line, the orange line is the signal line. Okay, remember the signal line is the orange one and that's a derivative of the MACD line. So when the blue line crosses <clears throat> the zero line, that's a bullish center line cross. Conversely, a, um, a, a, the, the MACD blue line crossing below the zero line is uh, considered a bearish center line cross. Now, now, right, so when a, a bullish centerline cross happens when the MACD, uh, sorry, a bullish centerline cross happens when the 12 day EMA of the underlying price action cross, uh, moves above the 26 day EMA. I'll just demonstrate this quite easily here. So as you can see at this point here, on the main chart, the 12-day uh, the, the EMA has indeed crossed above the 26-day EMA, and we have seen the MACD cross above the, um, the, uh, the center line. And, uh, um, so, and just, just, to, just, to, um, just to be clear, we then also have the bearish center line cross, which as you can see, the 12-day EMA is below the uh, 20 as has moved below the 20 um, the 26 day EMA and with that you have the MACD bearish center line crossover um, however you will note if, if, you, if you're like me I, I do try, try to, I do go into detail with these indicators sometimes and uh, you will find that there is a lag it's not perfect uh, I think that has to has to do with something uh, to do with the trend. Um, to be frank, I've never used the MACD centerline crossover in my trading, and I probably never will. It's just, um, it's, uh, it, but look, some traders do use it as, as a confirmation of the trend. And what it does show is that upside momentum is gaining speed. So that's all it is. Shows that upside momentum is gaining speed on a bullish centerline crossover. Downside momentum is gaining speed on a bearish centerline crossover. Um, so ultimately, really, the, the uh, uh, bullish centerline cross suggests an upward facing market and indicates by signals, right? So, and, um, and, and this is, as I've said, essentially tells you that, uh, a bull uh, that upside momentum is increasing. Um, same for a bearish centerline crossover, which I won't go into detail because it's pretty self explanatory. It's just the opposite of a bullish centerline crossover. Of course, something to be very aware of in um so let's imagine we are trending we are trending higher so perfect example here guys look we're trending higher downward crossing um downward for anyone that's going to uh, going to try and uh, implement this in their trading downward crossing um bearish center line crossovers in uptrends in trending markets uh, tend to not be as reliable, um, according to, to some traders that use this, and indicate, as you can clearly see here, indicate false signals. Okay, so we have a bearish centerline crossover, but we also have a clear uptrend. So always look at the price action, guys. Always look at the price action. Um, price action has always remained king for me, and uh, I always let the price action tell me. We are in an uptrend, right, guys? So a bearish centerline crossover will not really get me out of a trade, especially if it is a strong um, uh, uptrend. Uh, it's the same. Uh, it's the same for uh, downtrends and upward crossings. I won't go into these. I can if you want. I can show you. Here we go, guys. Look, a clear downtrend on the euro dollar. Uh, we've actually been in a clear downtrend since the beginning of 2021. And uh, look, so a clear primary bear trend on in the euro dollar, and we have a number. Can you see a number of upward uh, uh, bullish centerline crosses to the upside here, here, here? All false signals, guys. All false signals. Um, so just be, this is something to certainly be aware of uh, if you're going to um, just trying to get rid of that circle. There we go. Uh, do, if you're going to implement this in your trading. Now, moving on to what's known as signal line crossovers. Now, the signal line crossover is, is, um, has to be, you know, especially for new traders, has to be one of the most popular way of viewing the, uh, the MACD. Um, uh, remember, we have, with the MACD, we have the 
MACD line. Let me zoom in so we're nice and clear. We have the MACD line, which is the blue line, and we have the signal line, which is the orange line. Again, guys, the signal line will react slower than the MACD line because of the calculation. The, the signal line is a nine-day EMA of the MACD line. Now, there is a question. I did briefly catch a question in the uh, question box regarding what an EMA is. So a simple moving average is equal points on uh, equal. So a simple moving average is measured by equal data points. So it's equally weighted. But with the exponential moving average, there's a weight applied to the most recent price data. I did go over the calculation in one of my webinars. I I cannot remember which webinar it is, um, I, but I did go over the calculation. Please do uh, search for that if you're interested in the calculation. Or look, alternatively, just do a quick Google search and uh, uh, how to calculate the EMA, and you'll see the calculation. Um, uh, right, okay, so signal back to signal line crossovers. So... As a moving average of as a moving average of the um, of the MACD line, the signal line is um, it trails the MACD right and makes it easier to spot um, the uh, uh, spot MACD turns right, and that was the main reason uh, Thomas Asprey developed the uh, sorry um, uh, uh, George uh, Gerald Appel George Gerald Appel developed the uh, MACD line was to spot the MACD turning higher. So as you can see, we cross we cross above the signal line. It's a signal. It's a signal that uh, uh, buyers are now trying to take trying to take control. It does not necessarily mean they are going to take control. As you can see, as you will know, with many moving average um, uh, strategies, there are a number of false signals. Just as a quick example for trend followers, uh, for anyone that's interested in long term trend following, if you're using the say 50 day uh, simple moving average and the 200 day simple moving average, you will note that there will be a number of uh, false signals before you hit that big trend. That's a common trait of trend following um, trend following strategies is you'll have a number of con uh, cons um, consecutive losing trades before you hit that big one. And if you manage to trade correctly during the trend, and please, the uh, it really makes me almost cringe when I hear people that say that the uh, winners will take care of themselves. That's so inaccurate because it, it's almost as hard to stay in a winning trade, right? Because the fear and greed all take all take control there. So you still have to manage your trade as the price is increasing or decreasing, depending on the way uh, which way you are um, you are uh, um, uh, trading. Um, right. So remember that the um, the MACD, the, the signal line crossovers are, in fact, lagging. Right. It's a moving average. They are moving averages. So they are lagging by nature. Um, so the lag is not insane, really. As you can see here, the lag is not insane. I'm just trying to find an example, a good example where it worked. OK, so here we have price turning higher. And as you can see on this candle here, we have clearly turns higher and the uh, the MACD uh, the MACD line crosses above the signal line at this point here so look it's not much of a lag um, it really isn't much of a lag so it would have got you in about this point and you know I'm not saying that you would have got out at the top here but um, I think you get my I think you get the gist of what I'm trying to um, demonstrate here the lag is not insane it's not the 200 day simple moving average and the uh, the 50 day simple moving average the lags are, are pretty insane with that uh, but here it's it's pretty close so we have um yes yeah, so this is just something to be aware of and look guys if you're if you're looking to trade the signal line crossovers look at the price trend before you take your trade right so we are clearly in a downtrend on the euro and i do anticipate that's going to, to continue if i just quickly switch over to the uh, uh, the US dollar index. Uh, this is the RSI, so please take that uh, with a uh, um, uh, ignore that for now. But look, we are in a clear uptrend on the US dollar index, and the euro is the largest component of the US dollar uh, US dollar index. Right, it's around it's around fifty eight percent. So when the US dollar index does uh, appreciate, generally what you'll see is the euro uh, is weighed upon. Um, so you're and that's what you're seeing here, guys. You're seeing the euro. Um, 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 in a clear downtrend. So only take the bearish signal line crossovers. It's pretty self-explanatory. Do not try and catch the bottoms. Like for me, I'm, this is just 
I'm, I'm almost speaking to myself here. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not, um, I'm not trying to um, just take, take it as you will, if, 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 if for lack of a better word, it's just how I approach the market. So if, if the trend is clearly lower, I am going to only take bearish signal line crossovers at this point here. Um, at this point here, as you can see, they are far more accurate if you're trading with the trend. So we cannot use this indicator as a sole um, determination of the um, of the trend. Yes, Paul, I've just caught your question. Uh, not a question, just comment. Winners are hard. Yes, they are. And that's why I, that's why I, I, for lack of a better word, I almost cringe when I hear people. Winners will take care of themselves. Them, themselves. I've never, I, you know, I've been trading for years, and winners have never taken care of themselves unless I unless I'm admitted to a hospital, hospital and I'm put in a coma and I can't control my, um, uh, my, uh, my positions, then yeah, winners will take care of themselves, assuming that price continues to rally or decrease, depending on the, it takes, you, you know, this is a, <clears throat> a very psychological game, right? A very, very psychological game. And like I do in most of my webinars, I, I recommend to read the book written by um, the late Mark Douglas, Trading in the Zone. It's, uh, it really does touch home on the psychological elements of, of uh, uh, trading psychology. All right, sorry for diverging there, guys. So look, I think I've calcu I think calculated, I think I've covered most of what the, the signal line crossovers, it's pretty self-explanatory, right? So we, the MACD line crosses above the signal line, that's a bullish signal to potentially look for um, uh, uh, um, uh, buy setups, a bearish signal line crossover. Well, then you're looking for sell setups, guys. Please do trade this with the trend. You're 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 highly likely to have a lot more consistently winning trades if you're trading with the overall trend. Remember, the MACD uses moving averages, which are trend following indica uh, basically trend following indicators. Okay, so with that out of the way. I'm going to now talk about the um, the overbought and oversold, right? So you will see on many websites that they say that overbought and oversold signals are not really accurate. Oh, look, I kind of agree because it's not bounded, right? The MACD has no boundaries like the RSI. Let me just quickly show you on the RSI. The RSI has clear boundaries, right? So we have the 70 threshold on the RSI and we have the 30 threshold, okay? 30 uh, is oversold threshold, 70 is the over, uh, overbought threshold. But with the MAC, we have nothing. That's not to say we cannot use this. So look, to determine, this is where some experience really comes into play here, guys, for me anyway. So as you can see, I've pre-drawn, let me just get rid of these zones because this was a point I really wanted to hit home. So as you can see, we have to pre-draw our, our overbought and oversold thresholds going by historical data. So as you can see here, we have a clear point where, um, the, where the indicator turns higher, right? And this was back in November 2015. Um, just bear with me. Okay. So yes, this is a point where the indicator clearly turns higher again here. Look, it's basically traditional support and resistance, nothing more. So for the over oversold threshold, you're looking for support for the overbought area. You're looking for clear resistance, clear, clear resistance. So clear support, clear support. And uh, we just missed it here. But as I recommend with all support and resistance, we use zones, right? We don't, Price very rarely, unless you're, unless you're some sort of a trading god that I'm unaware of, it's very difficult to pinpoint the a, a definite level in the market. All right, so and that goes to that's the same for the MACD. So use zones. So we can include this point here, right? I hope you can see that this point here. We've already included that with the line, and we then and then look if we include the low of this point here. And to give it some breathing room below the um, below the uh, 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 line we've already drawn, and look, we have a nice area of um, of overbought an over overbought threshold, right? Fantastic. And then we can look for uh, the then we can start looking for the uh, bullish and bearish signal line cr uh, crossover. So in the case of this, we're oversold, right? So let's zoom in again, guys. I would always look at the trend still. 
uh, just to be clear. So we have a, a nice, so we're, we're almost consolidating after a, uh, a strong downtrend in 2015. And then we're, we've hit a consolidation, right? Would I take this signal here? Probably not. Given that this is also the start of the oversold uh, area, we have nothing here. So would I take this signal? Pr again, probably not to be quite honest with you because look, we are in a downtrend and it's almost like we're resuming to the downside. So you have to be very, very picky with your trades, very picky. Now, would I take this trade? This is a potential trade because of where we are now trending. We are, we have switched to an uptrend, right? We formed a clear higher high, higher low, higher high. And, um, and at this point we are, we are uh, chewing on the possibility of a uh, dip buying scenario. Look, of course it didn't work at this point, but look, we, we have hit the oversold threshold and we formed a bullish uh, uh, signal line crossover. Buyers did come in. They really did try to come in at this point, but you know, ultimately failed. That is part of the business. We do get losses. Anyone that tells you that there are no losses or, or a 99% win, look, you think, I, I, think I'm, I think you know where I'm going with that one. Um, and also here, would I take this signal? Look, although it worked, it, it gave you a nice, if you're, if you're, if you're a counter trend trader and you're happy with these kind of signals, then by all means, try to implement it into your trading. But look, guys, do back test these. Do not just um, blindly follow these signals. Back test it to see if it has any, any, any credibility before um, applying live funds to this. But that, that was the point I really wanted to make. So you can find overbought and oversold thresholds. Now, in terms of overbought, quite simple, guys. Look, we have a clear overbought, 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 and an overbought area here. Again, we can draw areas to, to include this, this point here. Look, we can even, let me just show this. We have this point here. And then if I really wanted to include these points here, these points here, these points here, points. So we've included a lot of data. Look, I'm sure most of us know how to draw support and resistance areas. I, I won't go into too much detail with this, but it's it, it's simply do not rely on a definitive line for your uh, overbought and oversold thresholds with this indicator. And also, guys, for me, I would always recommend trading with the trend, especially if you're trading on the daily, uh, weekly, and monthly timeframes. Um, but look, that's not to say this doesn't work counter trend. Um, it's just it, 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 what's, uh, it's what fits your personality. So this is a way you can really look at overbought and oversold um, areas. Now we can even go out longer, right? So I, I've drawn, this is one I drew earlier. Um, I believe it goes all the way back to, yeah, quite far. 1994. So we have a clear area of overboard, right? So if we do eventually get up to this area, we are currently at this point here. If we do eventually get up to this area, there's a high chance that we are going to see momentum to the upside, um, um, potentially, potentially uh, uh, rotate to the downside or potentially weaken, if you will. So it's just something to be aware of. That you, so you can draw overboard and over, oversold thresholds. You just have to do them manually. And, you know, sometimes I feel like the manual approach is, is even better than having a set, um, a set threshold as you, as you do with the um, RSI. Look, divergences, guys. Right, so I, I'm pretty sure you can all see I've already applied the divergences, some of the divergences to the chart. Now, some analysts use, use the peaks and troughs um formed by the macd formed by the macd guys not the signal line the macd uh, to construct divergent signals so just to just to demonstrate what 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 the macd is showing it's showing that upside momentum in terms of a, a regular bearish divergence what it's showing is upside momentum was strong in this leg look you can see by the size of the boxes strong upside momentum and upside momentum is starting to wane if you will but look, once you understand and you can read charts uh, with more, um, uh, with more exp as, you'll, as you gain more experience, um, you'll, you'll be able to see this anyway. And, uh, but, but for any newer traders that, or, you know, look, for me, even, uh, for me I always, always also use the RSI just 
because sometimes you miss things on the charts, right? And the RSI does a good job of highlighting the divergence, as does the MACD. So as you can see, strong upside momentum at this point, not, not as strong upside momentum at this point. And what you have here then is you have um, a, a bearish divergence. And look where the bearish divergence is formed. It's formed at our overbought, uh, overbought uh, threshold. Now, this is what you would refer to as regular bearish divergence. Um, we also have what's known as bullish divergence, a regular bullish divergence at this point here. Um, at this point here, as you can see, the MACD formed a higher, a higher high, um, and the uh, price action formed a lower low. 101 stuff, guys, for divergences. I assume most of us are aware of what divergence is, but we also have a, another divergence, which is known as hidden, um, hidden divergence. Now, plenty of websites do describe this, and from, from what I've seen, it's mostly accurate. So if you want further information, do feel free to just do a quick Google search. But look, a, just to be clear, the, um, I always look for regular bullish and regular bearish divergences within, within periods of overbought and oversold areas. So it just makes sense to me. Um, so this is not really something I would take, even though it worked out beautifully. But um, I would always be looking for the overbought and oversold areas to form the uh, uh, to look for the divergence now in terms of where we um, uh, in terms of uh, hidden divergence this is something is a little bit different this is where price action actually leads the indicator if you will so as you can see here we have um, I think this is a that's drawn incorrectly actually just bear with me I cannot find one. So here's another, let me just get rid of that because that's actually incorrect. There's another regular bullish uh, divergence. So I'm just trying to find a hidden, um, a hidden divergence for you. So we have a rough idea of what we're looking at. Oh, just to be clear as well, when you're drawing these, uh, when you're drawing divergences, draw from the closing prices, guys, because Look, these indicators are formed from the closing prices. The EMAs that are uh, involved within this indicator are, are, are computed from the closing prices, not the highs. Okay, so we draw our divergences from the closing prices, right? So closing price to closing price. Let's go with this one here just to make it clearer. So from closing price to closing price, that's how we draw our divergences. Uh, sometimes you'll find that some traders will note that uh, there is a divergence when they clearly isn't because the closing prices are not showing any uh, form of divergence. Um, I'm just trying to, still trying to find a, um, a, a um, um, hidden divergence. If I come across one, I'll show you, but all it is is, let me just uh, draw this up. So just in case I cannot find one, so we're all clear. So what the hidden divergence tells us is, so price has, um, Price has made a lower low, but the indicator has made a higher high. Okay, so what you're seeing here, oh, no, that's actually regular. Sorry, guys, I'm, I'm completely, my brain is frozen with this. I, I don't want to give you the incorrect information. If I see one, I'll highlight it for you. If you want more uh, clarification on this, please do email me and I'll uh, get, uh, get some examples sent to you, no problem. Uh, but again, if I see one, I'll highlight it. Um, so... Look, just, just to be clear, we are working with closing prices here, guys. Always draw your lines, again, from closing prices. And uh, uh, look for regular bullish and bearish divergences within, within overbought and oversold areas. The, the hidden divergences, just to be clear, guys, the hidden divergences are more, are more uh, continuation signals within the trend. So you will not necessarily see these form within the um, within overbought and oversold thresholds. Now this goes for the RSI as well. All right. So we can also another thing you can take into uh, take on board is like the RSI again. You can also use trend lines on your MACD. I haven't drawn on the, any on this chart, but uh, I will do just to show. We can use let's use this divergence line as a trend line. We can use the um, uh, um, as as we've used support and resistance to define the overbought and oversold thresholds. We can also use support and resistance within the indicator itself. 
to find points where it would potentially bounce. Uh, not necessarily an overbought and oversold area, if you will, but more of a uh, local support and resistance. But you can also use trend line support. So the basic uh, low, higher low, and uh, we have a break to the downside. And this, what this does is gives you an early signal, right? An early signal that uh, uh, price could potentially continue lower. Uh, we can also you, look at this if you really want to take it uh, a little bit further. You can also look at something like um, a multi time frame um, stochastics. So, this is the daily time frame. We know we have bearish divergence at this point. Let me just highlight this. Uh, around this point, we have a bearish divergence, right? Because we have to see um, uh, uh, some, 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 some rotation to the downside. So, let's switch over to, say, the H1 and then look at what we can find. Let me just find that point. There we go. Okay, so at this point, look, you can clearly see if I draw a channel around this. Now, this is not how I draw channels. It's just to show you that momentum is clearly, clearly showing, um, showing, um, showing that the, uh, the momentum is to the upside is beginning to diminish compared to this move here. So what you can do at this point here is you can take a short position on the break of this chan of this. Uh, it's not a trend line. This is not a trend line, guys, because it does not really show any type of trend. What this is is essentially an ascending support at this point. So what you can do is take a take a trade on the break of this um, of this uh, channel support, and you can also use the um, use the uh, Use the H1 uh, uh, MACD for, for further signals if you wish. So there's a number of ways you can use this. Um, uh, 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 but again, this is it's up to you to find out how suitable it is for your kind of uh, uh, personality and trading. So just, just to be clear here, guys, look, what I like to keep things as simple as I possibly can. So I, like, I, I look at clear support and resistance. With and, and, it, and if there's some form of div divergence at that support and resistance, that gives me extra confirmation that there is a potential trade um, to be had, right? So we have, so let's just uh, look back. So we have a quasi mother support at this point. For anyone that's un unaware of what a quasi mother support is, I have webinars next uh, week on the quasi mother support. So the quasi mother left shoulder broken to the downside partially reacted at this point and then reacted at this point here again. So it's causing mother support turned resistance. And with that, with that resistance at this point here, we have bearish divergence coming out of the overbought area on the uh, MACD indicator. So it's almost confirming that uh, uh, it's confirming your uh, area of resistance. Now, I'm just going to check the questions because I believe I have a number of them. So, Mark, you asked, why is it considered a lagging indicator? So, the uh, the MACD is considered a lagging indicator. It's not it's not fully considered a lagging indicator. But remember, we are working with moving averages here, and moving averages. The, what they do is they take their data from previous price points. So, previous price points, you're going to get a lag. The EMAs are lagging by nature, and that's why. But as I've said. The, the, the lag is seen with the uh, uh, bullish and bearish center line, uh, sorry, bullish and bearish signal line crossovers. Not so much the divergence. This is more of a leading indicator. The divergence for me is more leading. Um, I hope that answers your question, Mark. Uh, from Anonymous, we have, do you use different settings for the MACD EMAs or for the signal line? I personally do not, um, but I know traders that do. So if you decrease your sensitive, uh, decrease the, um, the uh, periods, you, you'll obviously uh, have a more sensitive indicator, right? So you'll have more overbought and oversold signals. You'll see more uh, bullish and bearish uh, signal line crossovers. That's up, up to you to test. Uh, but for me personally, I do not. Um, okay, MT4 has the MAC indicator download with both MACD and signal line. Okay, fantastic. Um, where it's from anonymous, so I'm not sure who posted that, but if you could, if you if you'd be so kind to post that link in the chat box so everyone can find the MACD indicator download, that would be fantastic. Um, question How can we through MACD? I'm not sure what you mean. Um, uh, by that question, I apologize. 
okay, I'm just reading another question. All right, so uh, I mentioned that that the 50-day MA versus the 200-day MA as a method of technical analysis it is a method of technical analysis. It is a very popular method of technical analysis as well. And can this be done with multiple timeframes, e.g. the daily chart, weekly chart? Of course it can, uh, but it's, it's most common on the daily charts because obviously you're looking at the 200-day um, uh, simple moving average in the 50 day simple but that's not to say it cannot work on other time frames um it's again it's up to you to test which one suits your personality uh more now guys i think i've answered all the questions that's been posed there i'm just going to switch things back to the uh to the um to the bear with me guys sorry about this um there we go right so i'm going to wrap things up guys so if there are any any more questions please do let me know but look upcoming webinars definitely uh i would highly recommend you join is the uh, quasi mother formation and this is a different way to looking at support and resistance now the quasi mother formation is something i use every single day in my daily market analysis and uh th this is on the 23rd of june at 9 a.m same time guys and then i'll go into a part two of that on the 30th of June at the same time. Please do uh, register for these because it is a, it's a fantastic way of really looking at your um, at the market uh, via support and resistance. As you can see on the slide, guys, comments and feedback, please do uh, send us uh, any... Um, um, sorry, Mark, there's another question there. Has depth of histogram Got something to do with accuracy of the macd signal i'm so sorry i forgot to speak about that bear with me i'll just get, get back to the chart sorry mark off I, I didn't see that uh, question right so i'm back on the charts now so the macd histogram so if you remember uh thomas asprey developed the macd histogram to anticipate anticipate the um the macd signal line crossovers now if i zoom in so we can see we have a look can you see the divergence at this point? So what it is, is when you start seeing the bars uh, uh, declining at this point, this is in anticipation of a MACD uh, um, bearish centerline crossover. So it's almost a, a divergence, if you will, right? So it's a divergence forming prior to this, uh, prior to the, uh, MAC, uh, the, the bullish or bearish center, the bearish centerline crossover in this case. But remember guys, the MACD histogram is simply the spread what it does, it measures the spread between the MACD line and the signal line, right? So I'm just trying to find another clearer. Um, so look at this. Look, we have a nice clear divergence between the troughs of the MACD histogram. Uh, we have a point here and a point there that's rising, right? But the indicator is uh, forms a lower low at this point. And this tells us with price, with the bars continually rising, we have a high potential of the MACD signal line crossing over. So it's, a, it's an additional signal to the um, um, to the to the uh, to, to help anticipate, as I said, to help anticipate the uh, the um, the um, the uh, bullish and bearish center line crossovers. Uh, sorry, yeah, sorry about that, uh, Mark. I completely I didn't 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 see that question. Um, Right, so uh, let me just spin things back. Um, sorry, guys. So yeah, guys, please, if you, if you have any comments or feedback regarding today's content, support at fpmarkets.com or alternatively market analyst at fpmarkets.com. Um, again, just to remind you, there will be a recording available of this presentation if you want to um, watch it at your leisure. Watch it and then send me your comments or feedback um, or any questions you have. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so that's all I really have for you today, guys. Um, I hope it's been been helpful. Um, please do please do sign up for our Telegram, uh, as you can see in the chat, uh, as you can see in the chat box there. I'm active on the Telegram channel on, on a daily basis. And, um, and yeah, so um, it would be good to see you there. So thank you once again for taking the time out of your day to join me um 
look, Frank, uh, please send me the, the recording. The recording will be available on the FP Markets website or uh, the FP Mark or the FP Markets YouTube channel. Just check the chat box, and uh, we have the links. Um, we have the links um, available there. So, look, guys, thank you once again for taking the time out of your day. I've enjoyed. I enjoy. I enjoy uh, uh, teaching things like this and showing things like this. So, I, I hope it's been of uh, benefit to you. And I hope you will walk away, especially the newer traders, hope you walk away a more informed trader, if you will. Have a great session and I'll catch you at the next webinar. Thank you so much.